The $1.7 million watch collection. Today I'm delivering on something you guys have been asking for for the last three plus years. I've finally been able to get a hold of some of the watches just because they've been in different locations and different safety deposits. So I have a total of 42 watches. Today I've brought you eight. We're gonna go over some of my favorites and some of the watches you guys might like a little more than me. So let's go ahead and get started. The first watch here is the Presidential Day Date. All gold, super heavy on the wrist. It's one of my favorites and honestly, uh, it's actually one of the watches I've always wanted growing up. The reason is the Presidential has always been, you know, a sentimental thing for Rolex. Everybody knows the difference in the band when it comes to the Day Date. So when you're outside wearing this, you know, someone will notice this pretty quickly on your wrist. Let me show you how, it, let me show you guys how it looks on my wrist here. This has some serious weight to it. Honestly, probably one of my heaviest watches, not considering the Richard Mill, obviously, but you guys can see how classy this looks on the wrist here. White face. Very nice, very classy. I can put this on with a suit. I can wear this out to, you know, a casual lunch. But I would say this is probably my favorite Rolex in my collection. So the second watch I have here is called the Root Beer. It's a nickname for this watch, uh, just because of the color here. This is a GMT Master Rolex two-tone stainless steel with uh, rose gold. I'm not too big of a fan of this watch. I did get a phone call from Rolex saying, hey, we have this watch available, just came in. Would you like to come and pick it up? And knowing me, I'm never gonna say no uh, to a watch. Even if I dislike it 96% of the time, I'm gonna come and pick that watch up. Now, this watch is a little too old for me. When I say old, this just looks like it belongs on someone that's you know over 30 years old. I do wear this time to time. I'm trying to accept this watch for what it is, but it is a very nice watch, very classy, and I do like the, the color, you know, the colors in this watch. The stainless steel with the uh, rose gold here. As you can see, the dial is kind of a little brown. It's very nice, um, just not for me. Feels really nice on the wrist as well, and it's not too heavy. So this next watch shouldn't really be something that I talk about right after these two watches, but the reason I'm gonna bring this watch up is because this is the last one of today's watch that has any gold in it. So this is a Datejust. Um, it's a pretty simple watch, very easy to wear, very easy to throw on with anything. I can do activities with this, I can bring this on a trip and not really care too much about this watch. It's a two-tone stainless steel uh, with gold coloring or, or gold, so, I'm not really a fan of the gold coloring. Like I said, it's only the day date when it comes to gold that I'm a fan of. But I can throw this on, go to the gym. I can wear this out to you know a lunch. It literally has no scratches on it because how much I don't wear this. So it is something that I don't really wear much in my collection, but I did get this a while ago and I, I do like it time to time. So I can just bring this on a trip and not really care if something happens to my luggage or something like that. Now we come here to the bad boy. Um, I really do love this watch. It's called the Pepsi. I think it's pretty self-explanatory why this is called the Pepsi. The blue, the red on the bottom. This is really nice. This is a GMT Master as well. This just goes honestly with everything and a lot of people before they notice that they just will notice a watch like this. This is the Pepsi, pretty classic. Um, the older ones are really nice as well. I'm trying to get my hands on one, but I'm also not trying to get taxed. Also, by the way, all these watches are received from Rolex. I have not paid aftermarket prices for any of my Rolexes in my collection. But yeah, this is the Rolex. I love this watch. I would say in my 42 watch collection, this is probably uh, definitely my top five. I really do like this. It just sits well on your wrist. You can honestly do a lot of things with this watch. Also has no scratches on it because I really do like this watch and I do like wearing my watches, but it's something that I want to um, 
keep in good condition for a very, very long time. And then another bad boy we have in this collection that has a really nice nickname, it's called the Batgirl. Now, obviously you guys might know the Batman. The only difference between the Batman and the Batgirl is this Jubilee link here. Uh, you, the Oyster Band is on the Batman, the Jubilee is on the Batgirl. So they call this the Batgirl. Also one of my favorite watches here, as you guys can see, the black and blue. Pretty self-explanatory why it's called the Batman. And just like the Pepsi, it sits on your wrist. It's comfortable. Uh, you know, you can do a lot of things with this. Go to lunch, go to dinner, put this on with a suit if you wanted to. I can do a lot of things, travel with this. Also, this doesn't have any scratches as I can see here because I really do like this watch and I've been trying to keep this as clean as possible. I would say in the collection, this would be probably top 10 for me. Definitely around that area, maybe top eight, possibly. Another one with a sick nickname, this is the Starbucks. Now, you guys can see the green dial, the black bezel. It's another one that I've recently got. Actually, I think I got this in the last six months. Zero scratches on this. The only time I've ever, actually ever wore this was in the actual Rolex store. This isn't a watch where I think I'll wear often or at all, maybe. Uh, it'll probably sit in the collection for the next 30 years collecting dust. But it is a very nice watch, very different. You guys may know the Hulk where it's all green. That's cool, I have that as well. And I also have the Sprite that I picked up with this as well that I don't have today, uh, which is one of the only Rolexes or probably the only Rolex made for lefties where you can wear it on your right side, it's inverted. But yeah, this is the Starbucks. Nothing really too special about this one. I do really like it, just not for my wrist. Now, this is a Rolex GMT. Um, this definitely has a few scratches on it. I wear this a lot. This is like the daily bang up watch that I can put on anytime. It's, a, it's just a classic watch. If you know anything about Rolexes, you understand how important this watch is to their history. As, as well as their Submariners, I don't have any with me as well, uh, with me right now. Hold on. As well as the Submariner. So the only Submariner we have today was the Starbucks that I just showed you guys. This is another GMT. As you can see, there's a bunch of GMTs we brought with us today. So yeah, this is my classic everyday watch. Very low key, uh, very simple. Just a black dial, black bezel, a little glossy um, with a, a, a oyster band. So this is a very chill watch that I can bring anywhere. I can roll, work out with it. I actually used to work out with it. I'm trying to see any bang ups just on the clasp. I still don't just throw my watches anywhere. So yeah, this watch is uh, just a classic one from Rolex. So the last watch we have here today is the Rolex Datejust Wimbledon. So this watch is very simple. I believe I picked this up for about $9,000 before taxes. Um, it's a very simple watch. It doesn't have a fluted bezel, it's a flat bezel. Green dial, uh, well, gray dial with green Roman numerals. Just like the Submariner, it's very simple. I can very much put this on with anything that I wear. I most likely won't wear it out to a dinner. This is something that I would just wear out to a lunch or, you know, just quick activities that I can do during the day, you know, as far as like working out, um, going to meet up with some friends, and, you know, just bringing a watch that where I'm not too worried about my wrist getting chopped off. So I can wear this very low key. Someone may not even know that I'm wearing a Rolex just because of this flat uh, bezel that we have here. It's, it doesn't have a fluted. I wish I did get the, uh, the floated. I don't think they had it available. This was another watch that I got on call from Rolex. And that's the finale of this collection here. This is part one. We're gonna do five parts. It's gonna be 42 watches in total where you'll start seeing some crazy watches just like this AP Skeleton, which cost almost a quarter million dollars. Then obviously we'll get to the Richard Mills and all the watches that you guys like the most. Comment down below, which was your favorite watch from today's collection? In my eyes, it's either the Day Date or the Pepsi. Let me know how you guys feel.